Hey, so we just launched a new plushie, right? This guy, Snuggooey. It's the latest mascot lock -in on. It's a hungry little sea slug in a security blanket. How cute. And squishy. So, so squishy. And made with extra soft Velboa fabric. This plush took us many, many months of hard work finding all of the right materials and getting it shaped just right. But I love how it turned out. And you know what else? They're available now. They are in stock now, and every single one of them is waiting for a home. Oh, please give it a home. All of the pre-orders have now been shipped, and I am loving seeing all of the photos you're sending me through Twitter. Look at all of these Snuggooies now in their forever homes. See, they really do fit just about anywhere. So to get your Snuggooey shipped to you right now, check it out at noggin.net. Link in the description. So yeah, it turns out Pokemon is ripping us off. They went back in time and made Chelos and Gastrodon back in 2006. Hashtag rude. So I have here a uh, Chelos plush from back when Chelos was new. Yeah, 2007. Gen 4 Chelos plush. Hey, look at it. And then I also have this Shellos plush from like last year. Yeah, 2021. And like, look at it. Man, Pokemon merch has gotten so much better. Fun. But actually, no, they just happen to both be sea slugs. Gastrodon and Shellos have no security blanket or flan like body that needs to munch all the time. Shellos and Gastrodon each come in two varieties pink and blue, west and east. And you find each on different parts of the map. The, the east and the west, if that wasn't apparent. Uh, we first see them in Sinnoh, where they appear on opposite sides of Mount Coronet. And according to Nurse Joy, in one of the episodes, the Shellos got separated right around the time when Mount Coronet was beginning to form. The formation of the mountain in the distant past led the population of Shellos to be split, and now there's these two different forms. But oh gosh, that kind of goes against Pokemon creation theory, doesn't it? Like how Arceus and the creation trio created the world from Spear Pillar at the top of Mount Coronet. Uh, this instead seems to imply that the world was already there and Chelos were just kind of chilling, and then Mount Coronet formed the way mountains and volcanoes form, naturally. Hmm. Well, that's too deep and lore-heavy for a Gastrodon video, so let's stick with them. This whole concept of different forms being split like this, though, is called allopatric speciation, and it's a big driving force in evolution, and is probably the main kind of evolution you think of when you think of evolution. Think of Darwin's finches. Each island in the Galapagos has a different main food source for the birds, and so over generations, the birds there get better and better at eating that one particular food source, like thicker and stronger beaks for cracking nuts, or long and thin beaks for reaching into little crevices. That's all allopatric speciation. In Sinnoh, the East Sea is cold, which is why the Eastern Shellos and Gastrodon are blue. Because blue is cold, whereas the West Sea is warm. And pink is warm. I I'm serious, not every Pokemon has deep biological meanings behind everything. But look at this guy! Sea hares or Anaspidia have hair ears known as rhinophores, and they look like Gastrodon's ear horn things. And they also have soft internal shells, like Gastrodon's shell remnants that its Pokedex entry talks about. Long ago, Gastrodon's entire back was shielded with a sturdy shell. There are traces of it left in its cells. Similarly, sea hares have a soft internal shell, and the design of both Shellos and and Gastrodon's backs are very reminiscent of a shell or saddle that once was. Some sea hares use jet propulsion to get around, whereas others can swim clumsily through the water with jelly-like wings. Which is what the flaps on East Sea Shellos and Gastrodon's back flap things are reminiscent of. Sea hares are probably also an inspiration for the color variations, since the color of the sea hare depends on its diet, especially the color of the seaweed they eat. This is most likely a method of camouflage, since it makes them blend into the thing they're on top of, and it also affects the ink they release as a smokescreen. It's just like the purple ink that both Shellos and Gastrodon ooze when frightened or squished too hard. Plus, purple is right in the middle of pink and blue, the two colors that the two mons can be, so it's pretty perfect. And their shinies might also be a reference to another Pokedex entry. The lovelier the ocean where Shellos resides, the more vibrant its color becomes. So I guess the shiny is just a different color because its diet and environment are better, where it happens to spend most of its time. I guess. Another dex entry. Scientists interested in Chelos' great regenerative capabilities are currently analyzing the materials from which its cells are made. And similarly, right now, scientists are studying sea hares to learn more about human memory and learning. And also, somewhat recently, Japanese scientists have been studying their ridiculous regenerative abilities. It turns out you can completely decapitate these slugs, heart and all, and they will just regrow their entire bodies. But hang on, hang on, back up just a bit. Why did they used to have shells? and now they don't. And wouldn't them having shells 
Make them a snail? Well, a gastropod that no longer has a shell is known as a slug, whereas one that has a shell but it's soft or its shell is too small for it to attract into is usually known as a semi-slug. Think like Sligoo, we did a whole video about that here. And if it does have a shell and it's hard and big enough for it to retract into, it is a snail. Full on, no semi to be found. And of course, all of these creatures together as a group are known as gastropods. Hence the name Gastrodon. And also, just like Shellos and Gastrodon, land snails and slugs leave slimy trails behind. Since they're just constantly excreting mucus, they do so to keep themselves moist and also to give them just the right kind of friction to keep moving, which they do by contracting a series of muscles on their foot. And when doing this, it looks kind of like a slow wave of a slimy muscle. And it's like how Shellos and Gastrodon wiggle their little peats to walk. Look at those little peats! Another particular group of sea slugs that clearly has inspired this line are the nudie branches, which is a massive group of soft-bodied ocean gastropods, and they come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes and colors, and the majority of them are absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorites is the Spanish shawl nudie branch, cause they just make me think of Spyro the dragon. And also they're native to the west coast and therefore are near and dear to me. Now the larval stage of most nudie branches have a coiled shell just like this, but they lose it as they grow older and by adulthood have no shell at all. It's kind of like how both of the shellos have big protrusions on their back and then they kind of sink in when they evolve into gastrodon. And it's also perhaps why they both have shell in the name but then what's with Los? Well, it's Lost. Its shell hasn't a... But speaking of names, Gastrodon's Japanese name, Tritodon, is a combination of Triton and Don, which is a suffix common in species names or another word for boss. And Triton is a Greek god of the sea and is therefore the namesake of a lot of marine animals like the Tritoniai Dei. Uh. It's a family of nudie branches that live in both warm and temperate seas, and also the coldest waters and the deep sea. Just everywhere. If it's a sea, they're probably there. It's just like the warm-loving West Sea Shellos and Gastrodon, and the cold-loving East Sea Shellos and Gastrodon. There's also the Diamondback Tritonia, which specifically looks very similar to both Mon in this line, especially the East Sea ones. But it's usually orangish or pinkish and white, kinda like West Sea Shellos. According to the decks, Gastrodon eats sea beach sand for nourishment, and since a lot of beach sand is actually bits of dead and digested coral that have then been pooped out like fish, like the parrotfish, this is an interesting Pokemonification of the kinds of gastropods that do eat coral, such as the mentioned Diamondback Tritonia. But Gastrodon also eat plankton. Since sea slugs are so varied and there are some that eat plankton and then there's other that eat algae, and then there's others that eat invertebrates big enough for us to be able to see them, and then there's plenty more that eat basically anything they can get their whittle peats on. So, Gastrodon being described as eating both sand and plankton is just one way to show this aspect of nudie branches as a whole. But also, cute facts, apparently you can ride Gastrodon? Look at this! That's cute! And another fun fact... My leg! Too fun for that guy. Gastrodon's Japanese name may also pull in Torito, which is Spanish for little bull, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, but they do have these two little bull horns, don't they? And this would also explain why it's placed alongside all of the other cow and bull Pokemon in this official art celebrating the Chinese New Year the beginning of the year of the ox. Neat. I love obscure little facts like that, but what do you think of these mollusks? Have anything to add? Let me know down below, and please be sure to check out noggin.net for our very own adorable sea slug plushie, Snagooey, and never stop using your noggin.